Today, I'm gonna to show you how to set up OBS to use on your WhatNot live streams. There's a few tools we're gonna to need before we get started. First being OBS or Open Broadcast Software. This is gonna act as the hub of our live stream. Next is gonna be VB Cable, which is gonna act as a virtual audio cable. I'll talk more about that later. Both of those programs are gonna be available for download in the links in the description. Next, you're gonna need a camera, whether it be a DSLR and a capture card, a webcam, a phone via app, just a camera connected to your computer. You could really have as many cameras as you can think of, but in my instance, I'm gonna show you how I set up my face cam for my OBS streams. And lastly, you're gonna need the lifeline of the stream, your microphone. This is the best way to communicate with your audience, so it's super important that you have a nice, high quality sound. All right, so I went ahead and installed OBS here and I have it open as if it was the first time so you can set it up alongside me. The very first thing once we open up OBS we're gonna do, go under controls here and click on settings and we're gonna scroll down till you see source alignment snapping. Now these three checkbox should be good to go by default. If they're not, go ahead and make sure your screen matches my screen, particularly in that section. And then what we're gonna also wanna do is check the final box that says snap sources to horizontal and vertical center. That is gonna help us later when we're designing our scene. So we're gonna go ahead and hit apply. Now we're gonna move down to video. So we wanna make sure our base canvas resolution is set to 1920 by 1080. We wanna make sure our output scaled resolution matches that. So I'm gonna to go to the drop down and change that. Next on the downscale filter, this depends on your computer. I'm going to change mine to 36 samples. If you're worried about slow performance on your computer, the stream is stuttering, or your computer is literally about to catch fire by overheating, Go ahead, feel free to lessen this samples down. That would be my first troubleshooting step if you run into one of those issues. But I have a nice high power computer, so we're gonna leave that at 36 samples. So we're now we're ready to create this scene. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna head down to sources, hit this little plus icon, go to video capture device, and then we're going to name this whatever you'd like. I'm gonna call this card cam because I sell a lot of Pokemon cards. It's purely for your organization. So you're gonna see this pop up, hi, hello again. You'll see by default, this takes up the entire canvas here. Um, but when we change it to my Logitech Brio, which is the name of my webcam that I'm gonna be using for this example, you'll notice that it doesn't take up the entire screen. Now this may not be a big deal if your video is already vertical, However, we gotta adjust these settings. Some of these devices require a little bit of setup. So when you run into this issue, what you're gonna do is you're gonna change your resolution slash FPS type to custom instead of device default. Then you're gonna go to the next thing down and select the resolution of 1920 by 1080. Once we hit okay, you should see the full webcam taking up that big canvas. So you might notice something. First of all, I can't read anything because it's horizontal and Whatnot's a vertical platform. So the weird thing about streaming on Whatnot versus another platform is Whatnot, when streaming from OBS, only looks at the very center of the frame. So the very first thing we're gonna wanna do is right click or command click on this video feed and we're gonna go down to rotate counterclockwise or CCW. That's gonna make it into vertical format for us if your source or your video feed is already for, is already formatted vertically, no need to do this step. Um, some iPhones will automatically recognize the orientation, but for most of us, you're gonna have to flip it over. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag a corner, click and drag a corner, and just kind of snap this right into the frame. What we're trying to do right now is just make sure we can see the full video feed. So now that we did that, we wanna go ahead and match the edges. So take the short edge of our video feed and match it with the long edge of the black box. So that way it's a perfect, ooh, perfect fit. There we go, takes a little practice. And then just as a sanity check, what we're gonna do is right click or command click again. We're gonna go down to transform and then we're going to hit center to screen. I lost it there for a second. So now we know that that is perfectly centered to our screen. So th at this point, we are set up the same way you would be as if you used your phone on whatnot. 
But the beauty of OBS is we can take it to the next level. So what we're going to head and go do is add another source. So we're going to go back down to sources. We're going to hit that plus icon and we're going to hit video capture device. And this time I'm going to call this my face cam. You could call it whatever you want. Maybe it's your side cam, your whatever kind of creative camera you came up with. And I'm going to select my other video device here, which is going to be my cam link 4k. Hi, hello again. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and click. Okay. We did not need to change the settings on this one because it takes up the full screen as it is. So what we're going to do is click and drag the corner again. And we're going to bring it on into our stream here and plop in the face cam just like this. So another cool thing we can do, let's say I didn't want people looking over my shoulder and seeing my messy room. If I hover over this middle section here, you'll see my mouse cursor change. Hold alt and click and drag in. This will now adjust my frame accordingly. So I can only show what I want people to see. And now we can move this around. I could put it over here. I could put it down here. And this looks pretty great, right? There's only one problem. And this was solved by a beautiful member of our community on the whatnot seller side, Bug. He created a fantastic template for us. Again, link in the description for this template. Let's go ahead and drag that over. So I went ahead and saved the guide that I was talking about earlier. And so I'm just going to drag and drop it right onto our OBS canvas right from file explorer into the OBS canvas. And we're going to click on OBS again here and we're going to do the same thing again, right click or command click, go down to transform. And this time we're going to hit fit to screen. So now that we have this up, it's a lot easier to move around the webcam and actually see what it's going to look like when we go to the platform. So this is really handy because it gives us two crucial guidelines. The first being this red line, which is, what the desktop user sees is anything inside the red box is what a desktop user will see. Now this white line, for instance, is what an iPhone 13 pro max will see. Phones are getting smaller. They're getting skinnier. So it is a unique aspect ratio for that device. So this inside this white box here is what we're going to call our safe area. This allows us to guarantee no matter what device that they are on, they will be able to see the most critical information. Some of this background stuff here, like this slab or this little end of this box is not a big deal, but you want to make sure that your cards are always present and seeable by everyone. So this guide is super helpful and can help you rearrange things to make sure you're doing everything right. If you run into the issue where you try to move something and this takes its place, go ahead and go over to sources and use that little lock button right there. That way you cannot grab it and you can only grab your other sources. Another pro tip, if it's still not letting you grab it, go ahead and just click on the name of the source here, whether it be the card cam that I want to move and then it'll work up here. I hope that made sense. Again, if you have any questions at all, leave them down in the comments down below. So with this all set up, the video side of the stream is looking great. Now let's move on to the audio portion. So before we get started with the audio portion of the OBS setup, we're going to want to download VB audio. This is going to act as a virtual audio cable. Essentially what a virtual audio cable is, is it allows you to digitally plug something into another port on the computer. So once this is downloaded, we're going to go into OBS. We're going to go to settings again, and we're going to click on audio. Now, before we change anything, we want to make sure that our desktop audio is set to default and that our mic auxiliary output is set to whatever your microphone is called. If it's a USB microphone, it's usually the make and model of the microphone. If you're plugging it into your headphone port, it'll say something like generic microphone. Um, whatever you are using for your microphone input is what you want to select here. So what we did when we just selected that is now OBS is going to capture everything that the desktop here. So anything that plays through your headphones or your computer speakers is going to play through the stream. So before you go live, you want to make sure that you mute your discord, your email notifications and everything like that and get your music ready because any music you play through iTunes, Spotify or YouTube 
they will also hear that as well. And this is going to be a lot higher quality than the traditional standard of playing music on a speaker and then having it play into the microphone. So that is the beauty of that. It's going to give us crystal clear music and other sounds that you could do like a soundboard. And then the mic and auxiliary output is just your microphone that's going to capture your voice like you can see right here on mine. So now that that's set up, we're going to go down to advanced and monitoring device. Now this by default was set up for me for cable input, but yours will probably say default. So you'll scroll on down to cable input and you'll see VB virtual cable. That is the program that we just downloaded. So you know, that's the right place. And then you're going to hit apply and okay. So now that we have that done, you can see my microphone picking up here. And if I pop up a YouTube video real quick, you can also hear the music. You see the little thing right here. You'll also see audio sources depending on your video feed um, right here. Those ones you just wanna click the little mute button because we're not gonna need them. So I'm gonna pause the music for now. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna right click on audio mixer and we're going, or command click, and we're gonna go into audio, advanced audio properties. So what we're gonna to wanna to do here is we're gonna to wanna to change the two microphones that we care about, the mic auxiliary input and the desktop audio. We're gonna change that to monitor and output. So you wanna make sure your desktop audio is set to monitor and output and the mic and auxiliary is set to monitor and output. By changing these settings, this means that the outputted audio is also going to be monitored or loop back into that virtual audio cable that we're talking about. And that's very important for whatnot because OBS does not have a way naturally or natively to communicate with whatnot in terms of audio. That's where the virtual cable comes in. We're basically taking the audio coming out of OBS and plugging it into whatnot using this program. So once that is set up, you are good to go. Before you go live though, we are good to go live. They can hear us, they can hear any music that we are playing. But before we go live, we wanna make sure we get rid of this guideline that was built by Bug. Again, huge shout out to him for this. Um, you wanna hit that little eye icon and hide that because you don't want the whatnot feed to see a double vision. So now we're ready to go. So now that this is all set up, we're ready to stream to whatnot. But before we leave OBS, we wanna change one last thing and we wanna hit that start virtual camera right underneath the control tab. It's gonna be two doors down from the start streaming button and two doors up from the settings button. So we're gonna see that, you should see it change colors there. Now we're ready to go to whatnot and here are gonna be your live streams. I'm gonna enable test mode right now so we don't do a fake stream. Um, and I recommend you do as well, especially if this is your first time using the setup because you want to make sure everything is prim and proper. I would also recommend having an extra device on hand, like your phone or something to check and hear the levels of the final product to get the user experience. So we're going to hit start streaming now. We're going to change the camera to the OBS virtual camera and you'll see that it's flip flopped. Don't worry about that. It's going to be normal when you hit the start streaming button and you're going to go over to audio. This is where that digital virtual audio cable comes in. You're going to select cable output. You want to make sure you, you select send raw audio, particularly if you're playing music and things like that, the noise cancellation, the echo cancellation and the gain control gets all screwy and it's a terrible experience for your user. If you want those tools of noise cancellation and echo cancellation, which are great things to have, you can set those in OBS. And the beauty of that is, is you can now follow any OBS tutorial and apply it to your whatnot streams. So we're gonna go ahead and hit start and we're gonna open the stream up. And here we are, we have our feed. You can see the webcam is working. You should hear a loop of yourself. That means that everything is working properly, but be sure to mute it because otherwise it'll be a never ending story. And that is how you get set up with OBS on whatnot. The beauty of this is the flexibility that it offers. It goes far beyond just using your phone as a camera. There's a million tutorials to do tons of cool and unique features, which I will try to cover for you as well, the top features that I found useful for my live streams. One more quick tip before we wrap up here is because of this setup, 
particularly for my breakers out there, anybody who breaks sport cards or Pokemon cards, or maybe you just have a really great time live streaming. This gives you the opportunity to also record your live streams. So right above that stop virtual camera button, there's a start recording button. So if you wanted to record your entire live stream and cut it up later for social media content, or just to upload to YouTube so people can rewatch the stream who missed it, this is a perfect button to press. It is gonna take up a lot of space on your computer, especially for that long streams, but it's a fantastic tool to help grow your business. And that's it, you're ready to stream on whatnot. So if you have any other questions, leave them down in the comments down below. If anything I did was unclear, you're running into unique issues, let me know. I'll try to help you out as best as I can. Also, if it's a more time sensitive issue, feel free to join our Discord. Our Discord community is filled with Pokemon collectors, comic book collectors, and more, and we just branched out into having a whatnot seller section. Because all of us whatnot sellers, we gotta stick together and we can help each other grow and succeed and also progress the platform. But that's gonna do it for me, have a great day.